All right, and with us right now, I've got Casey Chohan. Casey, you are the CEO and founder of Together CFO. And I got to tell you, I'm a huge fan of what you do. And, and what that is, is it's allowing earlier stage startups or, you know, you think of the level of a company where you would want to bring in a full-time CFO. That's a pretty big company. However, companies that are not yet at that level, if there's one thing I could urge all of them to do, and I'm sure you're going to appreciate this, is find a way to get a virtual CFO. It can change your life. And that's what I'm hoping, Casey, boy, that's the world's biggest softball for you. <laughs> that 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 I'm I'm hoping that you'll agree with me. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, thank you for that, and wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah, thank you, Josh. So, talk to me about um, how you started together, CFO. What's the you know what was the impetus for that, and what do you do today? So yeah, so kind of just. Going back to, to my story growing up in England as, uh, as a young boy in the fields with my dog and lots of mud, I always kind of had this curious nature which, uh, which drove me to kind of solve big problems for big businesses. So, uh, so that in mind, I then went into business and finance and accounting because I thought that would be a good tool or a good skill set to be able to solve those bigger problems. Um, I then went into uh, being a boring accountant, mm -hmm. so to speak, straight from university, which kind of gives me a visceral cringe when I, when I think of that. But that was definitely not a good fit for my personality. And uh, I didn't last long doing that. So within six months, I realized that that was uh, a not, not really a good fit for me. So I had to find something different that would that would resonate with me that I could see myself doing um, on a more long-term basis so then um, I quickly realized that I switched into becoming what we call management accounting which is an account an internal accountant for a bigger company um, which in this case was Flowserve which is a big uh, F&P 500 uh, company mm -hmm. um, through eight years so nearly a decade of working with Flowserve, learning the ins and outs of, of how they work relocating twice moving internationally to los angeles which is where i'm now based um after that i kind of had enough of the corporate lifestyle and i wanted to try something new so you know for, for almost a decade i was doing month-end close cash flow analysis forecasting budgeting uh, building better systems and processes. So I got very, very familiar with kind of the intricacies of how to run a big business. So uh, to put that into context, by the time I left Flowserve, uh, I think they were doing around 4.7 billion in annual sales. Um, but it just wasn't a place I was kind of comfortable with. By the end of it, corporate America was very different. They were more focusing on maximizing everything instead of optimizing first they were more consumed with perception over results and it kind of didn't really sit well with me i'm more about being results focused over perception focused um so then i left flowserve uh, on great terms and went into kind of the startup world helping smaller businesses um, and that worked really well i could then help with like being more hands-on with the operations with the marketing so that finance and the whole team could kind of synergize and be on the same page so that helped me make a much bigger impact a lot quicker as opposed to kind of the big fortune 500 company where i was kind of tied into sticking in my lane and not really being able to utilize all of my skills um then as time went by i went uh through a couple of different startup companies and different industries from technology companies mm -hmm. uh, to uh, global event companies and helping them grow. And then kind of the more I grew my network in that space, the more people kept reaching out to me, asking for advice, uh, which was the point I realized that, hey, there's, there's, uh, there's something here. I'm pretty good at this CFO thing and I, and I feel there's an opportunity to add value to the smaller businesses that really need that help 
as opposed to the bigger companies where you're just a small cog in a big wheel and it's just ticking over and over. So now um, we, we tend to help small businesses generally between two and 30 million in, in revenue who, who want to really take their business to the next level, can't really afford or don't really need the, the full-time CFO services, right? Uh, but really want to grow. Uh, and that's the type of company that's the, our sweet spot and where we add most value to help them really understand what's going on with their numbers. We present it in a way that's um, not overly detailed on the jargon. And we, we pride ourselves in presenting uh, results and drivers to non-finance people accurately and being able to communicate that efficiently because we, we found that that was one of the biggest pet peeves where non-finance people are spoken to as if they are finance people and they gloss over very quickly and it just, it doesn't become productive for any parties then. So I don't know if that was me rambling on a little bit too much, but that's kind well, of my background. Yeah. So Casey, so sell, say I'm a, start, I'm a small uh, business startup, like we're starting to get some good sales in. Um, what, what, I mean, I guess sell me on why I should bring in a virtual CFO. So the simplest way we look at it is the team that's got you where you are is not the team that's going to get you where you want to be. And that, that is assuming that you, you are hyper growth and you do have these ambitious goals of kind of taking your business to the next level. Um, and what that really means is every business reaches a plateau. So mm -hmm. whether that's at, let's just use $2 million in revenue as an example. So you've taken your business from zero to 2 million and now you're struggling to kind of scale that to the next level, grow it to three or 4 million. The team that's got you from zero to 2 million has done a great job. There's, you know, there's not many businesses that make it over that million dollar mark. And uh, so that's an achievement in itself. But in order to scale your business and kind of reach a new level, a new standard, uh, you will not, or most of the time, you'll not be able to do that with the same team. You need to bring in a higher level of thinking, a higher level of experience, uh, someone who's been there and done it before to be able to kind of help you navigate through growing pains because the problems you face at 2 million or 5 million or wherever your plateau is um, are very different from the problems you face when you start up the problems you face five years in or 10 years in so businesses are always changing they're always evolving and depending on what life cycle they're on depending on what size they are so what we do is we come in and we add that extra uh, ammunition at the time at which a plateau is reached or a time at which aggressive acceleration is required to help uh, support that leadership team. I think, Casey, that maybe a lot of founders think that the answers are, are pretty obvious. Well, I just need more sales. And so now I need to double down in this activity. Was this profitable? I guess. So let's do more of that. But what does a CFO reveal that typically founders and CEOs don't reveal themselves? Yeah. So it's so much more than just the sales numbers. So obviously that plays a big part in it and it is a huge driver. But if you're selling something and not knowing the real margins on that or not realizing the actual manpower and the time and the utilization of the staff to, that goes into that, that's, that's, it could be sending you down the wrong path. Mm. Ultimately, also, it's a defensive game. It's like uh, football. If you look at the offensive and the defensive, if you're making two million but you're spending two point five million, that's still not going to work in the long term. Although many uh, <laughs> tech companies would disagree with that, but generally speaking, we also have to look at the defensive game, which is the expense side of things. How is that working? Uh, what does that look like? Because a 10% saving in expenses could mean you don't have to make another hundred thousand dollars of sales. So the, you've got to look at both sides of that, but more importantly, where a lot of the businesses fail is in cash flow. So mm. we, we come in, we analyze the cash flow. We look at the cash flow cycles, the working capital cycles, your, uh, your balance sheet ratios, just to make sure that the health of the company is there, that the forward planning is there. So if we look at, just as an example, um, a company buying inventory. So if you overspend on inventory and run out of cash, 
you won't have enough cash to pay payroll or you know to pay vendors and other things like that depending on how quickly the, that inventory turns how can you make it into profit so it's just really getting clued in on the full life cycle of the business and making sure that you've got those checks and balances in place along the whole cycle so that it's efficient from beginning to end and having that financial person weigh in on that uh, is definitely going to help the team become more well-rounded rather than the CEO who's normally going to be kind of an entrepreneur minded person that's very go 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 you need to have a balance of that with real numbers and actual a good scorecard so that you're not getting too carried away and you're not overextending yourself but at the same time you're still pushing and you're checking and constantly monitoring where you are so for instance one of the phrases i always use is you want to grow what you measure so if you can't measure it it's hard to really focus growth on that mm. so casey one thing um so you and i have each attended business mastery and i know tony robbins talks about you know when when a business hits that adolescent phase in business and you know maybe you know the business maybe that means that you're now doing uh you know a couple hundred thousand to a million and all of a sudden you experience cash flow issues which seem to not make sense because your revenues are up uh but you know maybe you've said okay this thing is working and so now you've invested in more staff uh maybe you've invested in more platforms technology you know maybe it's office space but see all of these things even though we feel as founders like oh we got a sure thing now because this thing's working and we make those investments for whatever reason it's it it just it affects the bottom line and it's it's almost it's i mean it's incredibly frustrating when i look at my own personal revenue and i'm like listen i was making more money as a freelance you know when i was just doing consulting uh and all of a sudden we started growing and scaling and i'm not making as much money now uh i would imagine you see this pretty frequently uh, yeah, totally agree there, Josh. You know, as companies grow, the, there's a whole host of different problems that come up. And that's not just in finance, that's marketing, that's operations. It's it's pretty much across the board. Um, if, for instance, in the example you used, if revenue goes up, you may need additional staff to support that. So it may be sales team, it may be operational team. So your payroll is going to go up. Uh, and as a knock-on consequence, your healthcare probably going to go up. Your bonuses is going to go up. And then if people aren't the right fit, they may leave, they may claim other things, disability, or, you know, there's a whole host of things that, that can happen as an organization grows. Um, so it's very important to keep an eye on the numbers, on the bank, on the cash, on everything that's going on really to, as indicators, as you review your scorecard and you have some really good metrics around the business, and they are both financial and non-financial metrics that's really gonna give you the best picture of the health of the business so that you can drive that growth in the right areas, fix the areas that need fixing and pay attention there. But it boils down to two real things and the two real nuggets are having the right people in the right places and having the right processes. Without, without those two things, it's very, very difficult for any business to really scale to that next level. And so, Casey, as a business yourself, um, you know, again, I know you've been able to work with some pretty uh, um, prestigious clients, particularly in the uh, kind of the Beverly Hills uh, community. I see some uh, you've done some great work with um, healthcare providers and and uh, um, I see some optometrists and and uh, and then, of course, your work with uh, MGM and IBM and, and that sort of thing. Um, so. Um, uh, you as a VCFO, how do people typically learn about you and uh, how do you get your business? And I know, you know, just based on the kind of the level at which you work, um, you don't need to do massive volume. You're not looking to kind of become the McDonald's of CFOs, um, you know, but that you still uh, kind of operate a little bit exclusively. But, but how do you grow? How have you grown your business? Yeah, so primarily uh, it's just grown from word of mouth. It's been initial relationships that I've had and network have then referred and we've started working with people and just spread through word of mouth to start off with. And then more recently I've been involved with Forbes magazine and I've been doing some speaking 
engagements for the accountant and finance conference and the ideas conference and i have a few more lined up podcasts like this but generally speaking it's through word of mouth because you know Mm -hmm. finance is the most intimate part of of any business and to get a good referral and to get someone that you trust or your network trusts or is already using to be able to assist with one of your friends families or a network member um, often it gives a lot more weight than just seeing a random person on the internet and saying oh do I trust this person? So kind of the way we've grown our, we're a small boutique firm. And like you said, we don't take on a lot of clients uh, per se. You have to be a very good fit and we have to be a good fit for you because ultimately it's all about the client success. If we don't feel we can add that, the level of value that, that we feel is needed for us and we have a very strong uh, money back guarantee as well um, to back that up then we don't take on the client. So so to work with us, you've got to be doing in the region of at least $1 million. Um, you've got to be very forward thinking. You've got to be able to take criticism, to make the changes and execute because we're, the way we think is we're business partners. We're here to add value and help you scale. But if the comments that we, the comments that we make or the items that we find that need addressing, if those recommendations kind of don't get implemented, then we can't be effective at what we do. So it's very important that, that we have a partner that uh, takes that very seriously. Um, and that's ultimately going to be best for both of us. We only, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, we only want win-wins really is what I'm trying to get at. Right. Um, so uh, Casey, you've got a uh, book and it's the three vital steps to increase profitability in your business. And so, um, so someone, so, so someone who's listening to us, you can go to three, it's the number three steps to profit.com. And um, you can download, uh, download this for free. What, what's included in that book? So it's just, so it's like maybe an eight minute read. So it's very simple. It's easy to get through. And it gives you some basic ideas of the main things to look at uh, in terms of your business health and how to improve them. And then at the end of that book, we also offer you a free five minute uh, financial audit where we can uh, just take a quick overview of your company and give you a quick report on, on some of the high level things that we think that you could uh, help, help you scale to that next level. That's great. Well, Casey Chohan, you're the founder and CEO of uh, Together CFO. You're on the web at togethercfo.com. And of course, uh, you can get the free ebook, Three Vital Steps to Increase Profitability in Your Business. Uh, Certainly, if you're doing some decent volume, you're looking for a VCFO, uh, Casey, you provide those services. And I'm sure you'd be happy to have a quick call with someone to figure out if there's a good match there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Josh, for having me on.